Hi, Curtis in Seattle. I thought I'd show you my homemade cooling system for my shop. My brother and I made this a couple of years ago. He did most of the electronic work and integration of the components along with the programming of an Arduino controller. And I did the rest. It consists of two radiators, both are 20 inch by 20 inch with a 20 inch box fan screwed to the back. One radiator is inside and there's a radiator outside. It has an Arduino controller inside this old movie projector. There's a water circulate, household water circulating pump and a 12 volt three-way valve. Outside there are five 55 gallon drums that are buried in the ground and that's the thermal battery. The drums are daisy chained together and filled with 275 gallons of water. The controller has four modes. There's idle, and then there is cooling, which cools the shop down inside. And then at night, it goes into recharge mode if the parameters are correct and extracts heat out of the barrels. And uh, there's also a freeze mode in case it gets down to near freezing. It'll turn on the, the pump and uh, circulate water through the barrel or through the uh, radiator outside. The system uses um, three thermal inputs, a switched input, and a light dependent resistor. So the switches it uses are right there, those black switches. There's on off switch and then the switch on the right is the recharge cooling arm or disarm and right now it's disarmed. The light dependent resistor is in the case right there. It's mounted between those two screws. And then the temperatures that it samples are the inside temperature, the outside temperature, the battery temperature, and then the ground temperature is not used for any calculations, it's just recorded. Every three minutes, it records a line in a data file, seven days a week, 24 hours a day, and uh, it records the parameters of the mode that the controller's in, it controls whether it's in day or night, and the date and time. Um, it's set up so that when you come in and if you flip, flip the switch on and it's warm outside um, and it gets warm in here, it will turn on the cooling system at 71 degrees and then run until it's down to 71 degrees or, or lower. And when you leave the shop, you turn off the lights and it goes into night mode and then it knows that it can go into recharge. If the nighttime air is two degrees or cooler than the water in the battery, then it'll extract heat out and get it ready for the next day. It works. The shop is about 800 square feet, slab on grade, fully insulated and sheet rocked. The um, temperature in here, if you don't have the air conditioner on, sometimes can get up to 78, maybe even 80. So it, it really is, even if it's 85 or 90 outside, so it is quite insulated well, and uh, this really only, I think what I've determined is it really only handles about three to four degree temperature change. And um, if you open the doors a lot or have the garage doors open, you'll end up with um, the system running away. The, the water temperature in the barrels I've seen as high as 70 degrees, and um, it just, the temperature in here just starts to run away. It can't, it can't handle it. But otherwise, it works pretty well, especially after it recharges or even in the early summer, the, the water barrel temperature is never really more than about 55 degrees. And so 55 degrees running through a radiator and, uh, and then recharging at night, um, I have quite a few days where it never gets higher than 71 in my shop. So a little bit more about the controller that's housed in this Montgomery Awards movie projector. Um, if you remove the cover for the lamp, which they made really easy because I think these lights used to blow all the time, uh, I put a, an LED 120 volt lamp in there. And uh, that shows through these, these fins up on top of this cover here. So when it goes into cooling mode, the lamp comes on. Uh, you, can't really, you can't really see any light coming out of the, the lens. It doesn't really work that well. There's also a an SD card holder there 
so it's easy to remove the SD card and download it. The other thing is that there are three three plugs on this side over here. There's two fan plugs, the inside fan, outside fan, and then the pump is plugged in. And also on the back is where the, the um, power comes out for the 12 volt valve. That's where that automotive looking plug there. And then also the jacks for the temperature sensors. Those are all grouped in the, in the four there. Here's the, the fill valve. It's down below the bench top there. And then there's also a valve up here. And when I integrated this together, I really didn't think too much about pressures. I thought I would run a little bit of pressure in the system to help uh, and then put in um, one of those air um, escape valves. But what I found is that I've got about nine, seven feet of head inside the shop and then a couple feet of head outside the shop. And believe it or not, that puts about, I believe it's three or four PSI into the line. And when you calculate the pressure on top of a drum, uh, you get something like 1600 PSI. So when I was filling this system, uh, I had the tops of the drums expo exposed and they were pooched up and I was really concerned. I, I didn't really know what was going on until I went back and ran the numbers and then I realized that about my mistake. So I haven't corrected it with the system, but what I do is I, I put a hose in here and I fill the hose completely with water and then I run it down on the ground. <clears throat> and what that does is it, it um, acts as a siphon and so there's really no pressure up, actually it's a negative pressure up here and there's really no pressure in the system until you get down to about this location and then uh, maybe there's um, you know a couple feet ahead or maybe only one foot ahead it works um, i'm lucky that i don't have any leaks and uh, i've had to uh, purge the system a few times it's it's really hard to get the air out in fact there's a lot of air in the system but it doesn't seem to affect the pump um, you hear a little bit of air going through the pump when it first starts up, um, but really not enough to worry about. And uh, so I've only filled it, refilled it once, and I got a little bit more air out of the system, and then it's been running now for about a year with no, um, no additions or, or uh, no, no adding of any water. Uh, I don't run antifreeze. I looked into the cost of antifreeze, and it was... Um, going to be several hundred dollars to put antifreeze in this system so I just decided I'll oh, just run straight water it's just water out of the tap and I haven't had any problems so far um, we'll see if I do later and but if I do then I'll probably just unplug it and, and decommission it so here's the radiator that's outside like I said it's just got a cheap box fan and get them up behind there. You can see the temperature sensor if I get this in there. There's a the temperature sensor hanging down there. And then here's where it pulls water out of the shop or out of the ground into the shop and then returns it. There's five drums here with uh, 275 gallons. They're buried underground here, plastic drums. You don't really want to drive over this area. Really the only thing that goes over here is a wheelbarrow and maybe uh, riding a lawnmower. Here's a schematic of the, the cooling system for my, my shop. Um, it's Arduino based. It's got an Arduino Uno and a, a data logger attached to that and a real-time clock attached to that. It has two power supplies, a 5-volt power supply and a 12-volt power supply. This is a, a repurposed wall wart power supply. It runs the liquid crystal display. It has four temp sensors, inside, outside, the battery temperature, which is basically the water, and then ground temperature. It uses these three temp sensors to decide what to do, along with a light dependent resistor, which tells whether the shop lights are on or off. And there's also a cooling enable switch, the relay module, the outputs are uh, a fault light if I, there's a 
if there's no data room left on the SD card, it'll go into a fault, or if it can't read the temp sensors or they're outside normal parameters, it goes into a what, what's called a fatal error. Uh, the, the system runs a three-way valve through the 12-volt supply, and it also is hooked up to, to um, three electrical plugs. One is for the pump and the cooling fan and then the recharge fan. And then if it's in the cooling mode, it also turns on the projector lamp. Hey, thanks for watching. Uh, I just thought I'd leave you with a couple of thoughts here. Uh, before I started this, I did a bunch of research on the internet, on Google searches and also on YouTube. And I didn't really see anybody doing any kind of a system like this. So if, you, uh, if you've done something like this, leave a comment for me and let me know what you've done. And maybe you've even Im improved on the system or uh, have a better system. So take care. Have a good day.